Hey guys, how you doing? Carlos here from Yugi Dojo. Uh, I've been getting at questions a lot about my Gravekeeper's deck as to why I don't run Royal Tribute inside the deck. I'm going to explain that to you why. There's mainly three reasons why I don't run Royal Tribute inside my build of the deck. Uh, my reasoning is, one, I feel that Royal Tribute, not that it's a bad card because it is an amazing card, but I feel that it's more of a combo card, meaning that you need to have the Necro Valley <clears throat> out in order for Royal Tribute to work for you. Now, I don't like that because I don't like having a lot of combos because if I don't have the Necro Valley out, but I do have a Royal Tribute in my hand, it's a dead card. I don't like having dead cards in my hand. Uh, and as you saw inside my build, I only run one pot of duality because I only own one pot of duality. That's the reason why I don't run Royal Tribute in this deck. Uh, I feel that in order for you to get the most, uh, your chances of getting the, the combo pieces, you need to have the pot of dualities in there. If you have to have at least two, three, much better um, in order to get the pieces. If you don't have the pot of dualities, I'm going to say you shouldn't be running Royal Tribute um, because the, the chances of you getting both combinations of the pieces there, the both, both pieces of the combo out is a little bit more difficult. At least with Pot of Duality, you can gain your chances of getting a card that can get you the Necro Valley, whether it be uh, the Commandant or whether it be Necro Valley itself or whether it be the Recruiter that you're going to kill off to go get the Commandant to go get the Necro Valley. And being that I don't have uh, the pots, I don't play with the Royal Tribute inside my deck. Thus, that's the reason why. Two is if you see inside my build, my build is more aggressive, meaning that I use more uh, creatures to attack and the type of creatures that I use, like the Visionary. Uh, I think Visionary is an amazing, amazing card that it can't be killed unless it's basically removed from play. Anything that destroys it, you're going to be pitching your cards and you're going to be able to survive. So as you saw, being that I play with the Magical Dimension, um, that kind of gives me an advantage over some other people, uh, Gravekeeper's decks, because if I play against the Mirror Match and they Royal Tribute me, I'm more than likely going to be getting my cards back into my hand because I do play with the three um, steals. So I'm going to get my cards back. And two, uh, I have the Magical Dimension, which basically is going to help me out because I'm going to be killing off their creatures while putting in my bigger creature. And if they happen to have necro, if they happen to play with their necro value, remember it helps me out too. So my monsters that are going to be bigger monsters than theirs, being that um, the the visionary works off of how many grave keepers are inside the graveyard. So that's no reason number two that I don't play royal tribute, and the number three is I don't play because people expect you to see it inside your deck too. Uh, I have the advantage that since I don't play it, people think that I'm going to have it inside my deck because it is a Gravekeeper's deck. So they play differently. They do two, one of two things. One, they either play their monsters fast as they possibly can onto the field. And if they do that, that helps me out because with the revisions that I did to the deck, I can deal more of creatures. I can deal with their creatures a lot better now. So if they do that thinking that I'm going to Royal Tribute them, they don't want their monsters going to the graveyard. They'd rather, me put them in, they'd rather put them in play where they have possible use. And two, uh, they may keep cards inside their hands that they want to go to the graveyard so that it's more of an advantage for them when I royal, if, I, if I was to Royal Tribute them. So if they keep holding cards in their hand that they're expecting to basically ditch, that's an advantage for me because they have dead cards in their hand. They're not going to be doing anything. They're going to just hold the card until they wait to see the Royal Tribute. Now that actually has happened many a times when I've played people. They've told me I was waiting for the Royal Tribute. And basically what I tell them is I didn't draw it. Now I'm not lying to them. I will never draw Royal Tribute inside my deck because I don't own it. But there's no need for me to tell them that. I don't have Royal Tribute in my deck. So I, I play a little bit of a word games with them saying that, you know, I, I didn't draw it. 
So those are the three reasons why I don't play with uh, Royal Tribute inside my deck. You know, uh, please let me know what you guys think of my reasoning. Uh, if you guys can help me out, you know, rate the rate the video, thumbs up it, leave your comments below. I love to hear what you guys got to say because by your comments, you guys are helping me out uh, become a better player there too. And hopefully, with this video, it gives you insight of how I'm thinking and may help you out uh, with the way you play also. So leave your comments. Let me know what's going on, what you th thought about this, and that's the reasons why I don't play with uh, Royal Tribute inside my deck. All right. Speak to you guys later. Bye.